stuck in a rut. To be stuck in a rut or to feel stuck in a rut means that you're tired of the same routine. You're doing the same thing every day and you're tired of it. You feel stuck in your life, repeating the same thing again and again. And where does the expression come from? It comes from these. These are ruts. A deep groove in the ground from a tire or a wheel is called a rut. So if you're going through life and you feel stuck, we say you feel stuck in a rut. When you're stuck in a rut and embarrassed about your life, there are steps you can take to get back on track. Every day he drives to work. He has the same lunch. He does the same job every day. Nothing exciting in his life. So he feels stuck in a rut. Let's practice. How does he feel? Does he feel stuck in a rut? That's right, he feels stuck in a rut. So what does he need to do? He needs to get out of this rut. How can he get out of this rut? He can try learning new things, doing different activities, changing his schedule. Then he'll get out of this rut. Let's practice. What can he do to get out of this rut? That's right, he can start doing different activities to get out of this rut. So remember the expression, he's stuck in a rut, or you can say he feels stuck in a rut. So what does he need to do? He needs to get out of this rut and start doing different things. Today we're learning this expression, pay through the nose. Let's look at the pronunciation. Pay through the nose. We see the TH in through makes air with no voice. Link it together with the R. S -s 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 through, through, pay through the nose. And the TH in the has a voice, th, th, the, pay through the nose, through the nose. What does it mean? It means when you pay a lot of money. I mean really, really a lot of money. You pay through the nose. Let's hear some examples. So, guilty people will pay through the nose to get their names cleared. Pay through the nose for it. Oh, one thing we've learned. Fact, they'll pay through the nose for it. Example, he wants to buy tickets to the concert. He wants to buy front row tickets to the concert. The tickets are really, really expensive, so he's going to pay through the nose for those tickets. Let's practice. Is he going to pay through the nose for those concert tickets? That's right. He's going to pay through the nose for those concert tickets. Have a shot. It means to have a chance or to have an opportunity. You have a shot. I can use it in different ways. Let's take a closer look. I can talk about dating. If I think he has a chance at being with this girl, if he has a chance of becoming her boyfriend, I can say he has a shot. And I use the preposition with. He has a shot with her. Or if he doesn't have a chance, I can say he doesn't have a shot with her. I can say she's too pretty for him. He doesn't have a shot with her. Let's hear some examples. You think I have a shot with her? I might actually have a shot with her. Okay. Let's practice. Does he have a shot with her? That's right. He doesn't have a shot with her. Or I can use the expression and connect it with a verb. And I have two prepositions. I can use have a shot to do something or have a shot at doing something. Do we have a shot to go to Broadway? Yes, I think so. Bet your neighbor the accountant doesn't have a shot to get on the pro tour. To the game. They're going to have a shot to win this thing. Hill, Hill, nine, nine. Well, we might have a shot at it. If you can forgive yourself for what you did. If you do, if you stay positive, you have a shot at a silver lining. Alec will explain, but basically my parents think he has a shot at carrying me, so we're faking it. Well, I don't know if it's better, but I think I have a shot at winning the gold. Let's practice. Does he have a shot at becoming a professional basketball player? That's right, he has a shot at becoming a professional basketball player. So remember, have a shot means to have a chance or an opportunity to do something. Or I can say he doesn't have a shot with her. He doesn't have a chance of becoming her boyfriend. He has a very important test tomorrow. He has to pass the test and get a good grade. He has to try very hard to pass the test. He has to do his best. He has to do everything he can to pass the test. We can also say he has to give it his best shot or he has to give it his all. 
So if you're talking to someone and you want them to do everything they can to achieve good results, you can say, do your best, give it your all, give it your best shot. Let's listen to some examples. But if you go out there and you give it your all, that's heroic. And if you give it your all and believe in it, you'll be the best. Give it your best shot. You don't know what's ahead, you don't know what's going to happen next, but you give it your best shot. You're not paid to do your best, you're paid to win. But I can make sure you do your best here. To be in it for the long haul. Use the verb to be. Example, I am. I'm in it for the long haul. It means you're involved in something and you're going to continue until you finish. You're not going to quit early. You're going to continue doing something until you finish. Usually for a long time. You can use this expression when talking about relationships. For example, he's in it for the long haul. That means he's going to stay in the relationship forever, for a long, long time. Let's hear some examples. I just, I'm looking for the right person to share it with. Someone who's going to be in it for the long haul. It's part of the package, and I'm in it for the long haul. So few of them are in it for the long haul. Surfer dude here is not a guy who's in it for the long haul. Ah, neither am I, because I am in it for the long haul, Jack. Let's talk about pronunciation. When I say he's in it for the long haul. In it, the T is a stop T in it. Linked to fur, not for, but fur. Because for is not stressed in this expression, we pronounce it fur. In it for the, for the. Pronounce the, the, with a short uh sound. Uh, uh. Further, in it for the long haul. So example, he just proposed to his girlfriend. They're going to get married. So he's in it for the long haul. He is committed to the relationship. He's in it for the long haul. Let's practice. Is he in it for the long haul? That's right. He's in it for the long haul. Let's talk about the word haul. Haul is a verb. It means to carry something heavy, like furniture. You can haul the furniture up the stairs, or you can haul the furniture in a truck. Haul means to carry something heavy, but in this case, it's a noun. Why do we say this? I have no idea. You can Google it. But it means he's in the relationship, he's committed to the relationship, and he's going to be in it for a long time. He's in it for the long haul. You can use this expression for other situations. It's not only about relationships, but that's the most common example. Go rogue. If you decide not to follow the plan, if you decide not to follow the system, and you decide to do your own thing, you go rogue. Let's listen to some examples. Okay, don't go rogue. We got to do this right. You? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can go rogue. I mean, you know. You go rogue, he's authorized to hunt you down and kill you. In the present, go rogue. In the past, went rogue. But Lane went rogue and turned it against you, didn't he? A member of this fraternity went rogue. A U.S. sniper went rogue and killed several military officers. Put up a fuss. Well, we have two expressions, put up a fuss and kick up a fuss. They both mean the same thing, to protest or express your position in a strong way. But the problem is they're not very common. We don't use these expressions very much kick up a fuss or put up a fuss. So, which expression is common? Which expression should I use? You should use this one. Make a fuss. Make a fuss is the expression that everybody uses. And it means to protest or express your position in a strong way. You make a fuss. Let's talk about where the expression comes from. It comes from fussy. This is a description. Fussy. Example, a fussy baby. That's right, a crying baby is also called a fussy baby because they are not happy, they are protesting. So it's a fussy baby. Fussy is an adjective, it's a description. Let's practice. Is this a fussy baby? That's right, this is a fussy baby. So let's talk more about the expression make a fuss. Example, sometimes customers make a fuss when they have to wait in line for a long time. They protest. They express their opinion in a strong way. They make a fuss. So again, sometimes customers make a fuss when they have to wait in line for a long time. Let's practice. 
Do customers make a fuss when they have to wait in line for a long time? That's right. Sometimes customers make a fuss when they have to wait in line for a long time. And if you want to give emphasis to this expression, you can say, make a big fuss or make such a fuss. Let's look at some more examples. She's making such a fuss. Why? Why is she making such a fuss? She's making a fuss because she's hungry and her food is not ready. Let's practice. Why is she making such a fuss? That's right. She's making such a fuss because her food is not ready and she's hungry. Example, he's making a big fuss. Why is he making a big fuss? He's making a big fuss because he got the wrong order. Let's practice. Why is he making a big fuss? That's right. He's making a big fuss because he got the wrong order. Let's practice. I wouldn't make a big fuss if I got the wrong order. What about you? Would you make a big fuss if you got the wrong order? Very good. So remember, you might see these expressions, kick up a fuss or put up a fuss. They're correct, but they're not very common. Use the common expression, make a fuss. And you can express more emphasis with make a big fuss or make such a fuss. And remember where the expression came from. It came from the fussy baby. The description fussy to describe a baby who's crying. This is a fussy baby. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.